Welcome to FOSS North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors, our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the last day of FOSS North 2020. First on stage is uh, Chris Simmons, who will talk about Debian or Yocto, which is best for your embedded Linux project. The stage is yours, Chris. Hello, um, good morning, or at least it's good morning for me. It could be a different time in the world for yourselves. So here I'm, uh, I'm here to talk about um, embedded Linux operating systems. And I want to do a comparison between using Debian and the Yocto project. So let's have a look through and see what this is going to be about. Uh, skip that, skip that. So uh, I'm going to look at the dilemma as to which of these two you should choose. Um, and uh, I'll go through the pros and cons. I'll look at Debian first, then I'll look at Yocto, and then I'll try and draw some conclusions. And uh, I'll be happy, I hope we have time for some questions at the end. So if you have questions, please go ahead and ask them uh, on the chat and I'll respond to them later. So the dilemma. So here I am, I'm designing my new uh, gizmo and uh, it's going to be running Linux. I've decided that, but which Linux do I use? Um, I want it to work as quickly and as effectively as possible, um, but I also want uh, it to be robust and updatable and maintainable. So I know there are lots of options out there. Which one do I choose? So I'm boiling it down to basically two, uh, two options. You can go off the peg uh, and use a, an existing uh, desktop-based distro, such as Debian, or any other distro of your choice, Fedora um, or SUSE or whatever. Uh, um, Ubuntu is quite popular too. They're, they're all basically the same in that they are off the shelf, fully uh, ready to run uh, distros. Or you can go bespoke. So rather than taking something that exists already, I can build my own distro uh, from scratch using uh, Yocto project is the most popular, but there are other build systems, including BuildRoot, OpenWRT, and a few others too. So let's look at Debian first of all then. Um, so Debian is a full distro. It's been around for a long, long time. It has many, many tens of thousands of packages. Uh, it has a good support infrastructure, um, and it comes as a bunch of binaries. So you don't need to mess around cross-compiling stuff. You just install the packages you want, and you're up and ready to go uh, very quickly. So Debian, as an embedded OS, um, it has support for a bunch of architectures that are useful to us. So uh, x86-64. ARM V8, that's the 64-bit uh, ARM uh, distro, essentially, uh, ARM architecture, I should say. Uh, ARM HF, uh, which is ARM V7, um, which is the, covers all the Cortex-A uh, uh, series processes in 32-bit. And the old ARM EL, which supports the ARM V4T instruction set. Really, you shouldn't be using that, but hey, if you do, it is still supported. And You'll find Debian as an option on a lot of uh, dev boards. Um, the most uh, obvious would be Raspberry Pi. Now, Raspberry Pi is slightly different to the others in that it has its own um, uh, Debian distribution, distribution called Raspbian, um, which is actually compiled for the ARMv6 instruction set, which is the which makes it compatible with the processor used on the first Raspberry Pi, and is still used today on the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, if you're using BeagleBoards, then yes, they all uh, come with a Debian distro as an option. And the same applies to many, many other uh, dev boards. So 
So if you're using Debian, the typical uh, approach is to take um, a root file system, which you uh, got with a board, Raspberryan, for example, and then you can um, use commands like apt install to install packages. So if I do apt install XYZ, that will go to my uh, uh, the list of uh, upstream repositories in my etc apt sources list file. Um, it will then query the repository and it will be looking for a file, typically the name XYZ underscore some version number, uh, underscore the architecture, and then .deb, deb, deb being the package format used by Debian. And you can do this something very, very similar with Fedora, except those will be RPMs and you'll be doing a DNF install or something. So I've got my gizmo, uh, I've got my uh, board plugged in running Debian. Now I want the system to, uh, to be doing stuff. So I take the, the off the shelf uh, distro um, and then I start installing stuff. Uh, there may be some things in there that I definitely don't want. So I might want to strip out, mm, uh, maybe I don't need a word processor. Maybe I don't need um, uh, the, the media players and such like. So I strip out all the stuff I don't want because it just gets in the way. And then I go through and install the additional things I want, the various uh, uh, graphics utilities I might need, the libraries, support for various languages and so on. Um, I may have some uh, uh, code that needs to be compiled natively, something C uh, and C++. So I'll go through and compile those. Um, and typically I would do that on the target board itself because the target boards, these, these distros, they have a full uh, uh, development environment. They have GCC and G++ and everything else. Then add any other tweaks, um, startup scripts, uh, various other configurations. And at the end, we produce an image we call the golden master. So this golden master now is, has everything configured correctly. Uh, it does what I want, it runs my applications and I'm ready to go. So I take my golden master and then I take a copy of it. I can just use a, a simple command like dd uh, to take an exact copy of that um, file imi disk image and then just uh, do dd again to clone it to all the units that I'm shipping. So that essentially is job done. So what can go wrong? So the golden master, wonderful though it is, um, is a little bit tricky to uh, reproduce and to maintain. So first of all, the things we did a couple of slides back, probably we never write, wrote down exactly what we did. Even if we were fairly meticulous, there would be some steps that we skipped. So if we want to make changes to the Golden Master, we have to do it incrementally. So we, we boot at the Golden Master, uh, add a tweak here, add a package, change a configuration file, and then we create a new Golden Master from that. That's all very fine until we want to make some kind of major change. So if we want to completely replace the Golden Master with a new version based on the later version of the underlying operating system, then that's hard work because we then have to go through and reproduce all the stages we went through earlier, um, remembering that some of them were not actually documented. So there'll be some trial and error and some fiddling around to get it right. So there is uh, a very big incentive to stick with the Golden Master as it is using the version that was shipped. Not only that, when you create such a thing uh, as a Golden Master in this way, there's usually some kind of fingerprint left by the person who created it. For example, there may be some user, account, user accounts and passwords which uh, weren't cleaned up. There may be some history left in the .bash history file uh, for some of those users. There may be some log files left lying around from previously. And all of these things can be interesting and useful uh, to somebody trying to hack into your system. So really the golden master is not the best way to do it. 
if you really want to use Debian or a similar distro uh, for your embedded system, let's have a look at doing it in a slightly better way. So we need something that's robust and reproducible. Um, so essentially you can do this um, after all people build Debian, the Debian people themselves build Debian from scratch, so it must be possible. So you would take a thing like rootstock or dbootstrap, uh, which gives you a minimum, minimum, minimal, minimal Debian image. Um, and then based on that, you would start adding in the bits and pieces that you need. Um, ideally you would do this uh, in a scripted way. So either use an off the shelf uh, script or you write your own scripts or whatever. Uh, some examples of this would be, for example, the BeagleBoard image builder, and there's a link there. Um, that is essentially the, the bunch of scripts used by the BeagleBoard people. And similarly, uh, for Raspberry Pi and Raspberry, they use Raspberry Pi Gen. So you could have a look at uh, either one of those and use that as a basis for building your own um, from scratch, run once uh, script to generate your own Debian uh, from, uh, from, the, from its component parts. And that will be much more robust and reproducible because you can just run the script again, change the Debian version number, for example, and uh, with a few tweaks, it would build. This is slightly off topic, but I just want to have a say a quick thing about software updates. So this is a common thing we need once we start shipping uh, our products. Uh, chances are we're going to want to be able to update them either over the air or even just uh, directly using a USB stick and just going around and updating each individual machine. <clears throat> um, so how do we do that? So with Debian and similar distros, it would seem to be fairly easy. You just run apt update uh, to update to, the, to a later version and you can apt get uh, any additional packages that you want. But be aware that this is not a complete solution, or at least not in all cases. The problem with <clears throat> package-based update is that the updates themselves are not atomic, which means that, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> which means that uh, if you, for example, you lose power or the system resets halfway through an update, uh, there's a good chance you'll end up with a corrupted system, which will either not boot or boot and not run the app anymore. There are many solutions to this. Uh, you can do a full image update, uh, exactly as you would do with the Octo project as we're gonna come on to in a few minutes. Um, you can also do some clever things with containers and uh, flat packs and snappies and all that kind of stuff. However, I just wanna point out that if you're using Debian, uh, package update is probably not what you're going to be wanting. So, what else is wrong with, Deb with the Debian approach? Um, it does tend to build larger images than if you do the same thing with Yocto. Uh, and that's because uh, the, the Debian images are meant to be generic and to work on a wide range of systems. Um, and so inevitably they have stuff that's common to a large number of their use cases, but which may not be needed in your particular use case. And that means more software means more attack vectors. Uh, it means there's more software to protect. There's more things, there are more things that can go wrong. Um, also the uh, distro um, repositories, uh, although they do support typically uh, ARM processors and various other, platform, uh, various other CPU architectures, they usually use a common denominator approach. So for example, with Raspberry, we just looked at, um, that is compiled for ARM v6 for compatibility reasons with the Raspberry Pi 1. But it does mean that you're not, uh, if you're using the, the, the OS as exactly as it is, um, it's not taking advantage of the instruction sets of the later versions of the Raspberry Pis. Uh, it's just using the subset that is compatible with ARM v6. Uh, next up, the, um, these operating systems are not really optimized for using flash memory. They uh, still believe that they are running on hard drives, 
And so they will do a lot of stuff, they'll do a lot of disk writes, and eventually that's gonna wear out the flash memory. The worst case here is log uh, files. Uh, log files are really bad for, uh, for flash memory. The problem is that whenever you do a write uh, to a log file, usually they're quite short writes, small writes, you then have to do a flush to make sure that the log information got written uh, to the underlying storage. And every time you do that, you're gonna be forcing the uh, flash disk controller to do an array cycle uh, and, and uh, actually already to commit it to flash memory. And as you may know, flash memory, you can only do a certain number of array cycles before it goes bad. Uh, on modern flash drives, uh, it's quite a small number, it's about 3000 arrays is typically uh, for each cell. So, um, yeah, so just to come back to the topic then. So lo writing lots of uh, log, uh, small log files, sorry, writing log files with lots of small writes um, will tend to wear out flash memory. So one of the things you may well need to do is to go and disable or rationalize uh, the logging, for example. Uh, another thing would be, would be swapping. Uh, you really don't want to swap onto flash memory. Um, and then the last thing on this, on this topic then, um, yeah, if you're not using a cross compiler, then you're gonna have to compile on the target, uh, which in some ways is nice and easy because you just install the dev libraries you need and run the compiler, but it is gonna be slow and you're probably gonna run out of, of memory. So you may have to set up some swapping to some, uh, some uh, disk storage somewhere. Oh yeah, <laughs> and don't forget that uh, the distros generally just cover the base operating system you will probably still have to build the bootloader, whichever that may be, U-boot for example, and the kernel and the kernel modules. Um, depends on the distro. If you're using a, a, a distro such as Debi such as Raspberry and rather, that indeed will uh, update the kernel and uh, U-boot. Uh, but in general case, you'll have to add that in yourself. Okay, so that's the Debian side uh, of the story. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the open embedded and Yocto uh, side of the story. So the idea of uh, Yocto project is that you create a distro from scratch. You give a set of rules and uh, it will then go and, and, and generate whatever you have, you have speci specified. And it builds everything from the source code. So rather than using uh, pre-compiled binaries as with a, a regular distro, uh, we're going to be taking the upstream source and cross-compiling it uh, for whichever target you have selected. Uh, this has the advantage that we can optimize for the processor architecture we're going to be running on. Um, and uh, yeah, we have complete control over the whole thing. Uh, Yocto project is pretty well supported. Um, it has been very successful over the last 10 years uh, in getting support uh, from the main processor uh, manufacturers. Uh, it uh, supports all the main architectures, ARM, um, MIPS, PowerPC, and a few others. Um, and there's also uh, commercial support available from a whole bunch of other uh, people, including the ones mentioned on the slide. So, Going to um, building your your uh, your root file system, your distro. Uh, the way you do this with the uh, Yocto project is the well, Yocto project basically uh, is a bunch of metadata, information about how to build things, and the most important part of those are recipes. Um, and then there is a tool called uh, Bitbake, uh, which given some global configuration files saying what kind of thing you want to build, you can bitbake uh, a package and bitbake will then read the metadata. It will download the source code from wherever the source code comes from. Typically that will be a tar.gz file. And from that, it actually generates a package. In my diagram, I've showed it, shown it as being an RPM file, but you can actually change the packaging format to be uh, Debian or uh, IPK if you so wish. But 
those packages are really only used for build time. They're not really intended for runtime installation. So the final stage of building a uh, Yocto or open embedded system is a task called do root FS. And that will take a list of all the packages that you want to put into the final root file system. It will extract the information it needs from the RPM file and it will create the root file system for you. And then that is your gold, well, I was gonna say golden master, it's the wrong thing. That is your root file system. You will then uh, install that on your target uh, hardware and away you go. So uh, I just wanna talk a little bit about, about the metadata just to give you a bit of insight as to how this all works. So there are three uh, main variables associated with generating a Yocto project uh, distro. Um, sorry, Yocto project, project image. Uh, they are machine, distro, and image. So the distro variable is literally a variable called distro equals, and you give the name of the distro you want. Um, the distro is um, uh, controls the basic policy of how we want to put things together. So what kind of init system do we want to use? Is it going to be system D or uh, system five? Um, do you want to use uh, the latest version of everything or do you want to use more conservative version control and so on and so on. The next one, the machine, this um, has information about the target hardware. So it will uh, have information like uh, what architecture it is, uh, what uh, tuning flags you should use for GCC, uh, which bootloader you're going to be using, and uh, the file system layout and that kind of stuff. So all low level machine based stuff. And then the third variable is the image. So an image essentially is a list of packages, quite a long list of packages uh, uh, of, this, of the software, um, languages, libraries, etc., that I want to be installed into my root file system. And the nice thing about these three variables is they are independent variables. So I can change any one of those three things um, and uh, I'll get a, uh, and I can build using that. So for example, um, if I have two uh, different dev boards or target boards, I can just change the machine variable for each one of them, uh, leave the distro and the image the same, and I will get the same operating system compiled for each of those two boards. And they could be completely different architectures. One could be x86, one could be an ARM-based system. Um, likewise, if I have a bunch of images, um, maybe a dev image for development and debugging, a production image, uh, an image for a particular customer, then I just need to create the image uh, variable for that, uh, the image recipe for that. And then I can keep the distro and the machine the same and just uh, uh, pump out the images for the different uh, target use cases. So the whole thing is very uh, scalable. It's easy to customize once you have uh, the basic system set up. <clears throat> um, there are some downsides from all of this, got to say. So everybody says um, learning Yocto project is, uh, is, is tricky and it kind of is. Um, it's it's hard to say. So yeah, you, you've got to put some effort into doing this stuff. It's not just a question of doing a few app gets as you can with Debian. You've got to understand the system to some degree in order to set those variables up. So yeah, you've got to invest a bit of time and effort in understanding how Yocto works. Uh, the support window. Uh, this has just got better actually. Um, so uh, the Yocto project now has um, starting the end of April, the end of this month, there will be the first long-term support release of the Octo project. And that will be supported for two years. Nevertheless, that is still shorter than the support window you get with a typical distro such as Debian. The Debian uh, long-term support team uh, will actually support uh, uh, um, the, the operating system for five years typically. So you'll need to have a plan as to how you're gonna bridge uh, that, how you're gonna support your your operating system into the future. 
Oh, and I should say on that, um, you can do that yourself. There are also a lot of uh, commercial organizations, including the ones I mentioned earlier, such as um, Enya, uh, TimeSys, and a few others, that will give you professional support for this, for, for your Octo project. Um, the next issue, the process of building a Yocto image is uh, quite lengthy. Uh, and at least the first time you do it, it's gonna take um, some hours and it's gonna take a fairly, it's gonna require a fairly powerful computer to do that. So you'll need to have the hardware available to do this and to run these builds um, on a fairly regular basis. <clears throat> Okay, so that's the two uh, alternatives, uh, Debian or a similar distro versus uh, building from scratch using Open Embedded and Yocto project. So now I want to try and build some conclusions from all of that. So I would like to say then that for Debian, the real uh, advantage from Debian really is that you can build the system and have it up and running uh, very, very quickly. So Debian is great for proof of concept. Um, it's great for prototypes. Um, it's great for one-off projects where um, <coughs> you're not going to be disputing uh, huge numbers of them. And it's also great if you're using commodity hardware such as Raspberry Pis, BeagleBones, BeagleBoards, et cetera. Correspondingly then, I would recommend Yocto project um, if you are uh, designing your own hardware and you want to uh, create a distro for it uh, from scratch, Yocto project does exactly that. Um, with Yocto, you can actually lock the system down very effectively. A Yocto uh, uh, root file systems tend to be quite small and tend to have only the, uh, the exact software that you need so you have the reduced attack surface. And um, the people writing the recipes for Yocto project and Open Embedded do tend to be um, from the embedded community. And so they will uh, have in mind optimizing for, um, to reduce disk space, uh, to reduce storage rights, and uh, yeah, basically do the things you need for an embedded system. One little handy thing that um, uh, Yocto and similar things do is they all have an option to um, generate a license manifest. So you just uh, run the appropriate command and then that gives you a list of all the open source licenses that you are using in that to build that particular image. So that's handy when uh, um, you want to do your due diligence and say, well, exactly which licenses are we using here? Um, for example, GPLv3 can be an issue in some cases. So um, this gives you that information off the sh uh, directly. You can do, of course, uh, a similar thing with uh, Debian uh, distros. You can go through and, and, and extract all the licenses. Um, but to my knowledge, there isn't a way to do that very, very easily. Okay, and that is literally it. So I've actually um, gone through this talk about twice as fast as I thought I would. Um, so we are into the question time then. Um, okay, thank you very much for this exhaustive comparison. <laughs> uh, I myself have been using Yocta at work for at least uh, six years or something, and I can really say I'm a fan. <laughs> uh, so we do have two questions here. Um, the first one is, it seems that Yocta can produce a deb-based systems how would that compare to Debian? Can you merge those two words? Um, no, is a simple answer. Okay. <laughs> so Yocto does not create Debian-based systems in the way that you're thinking. So it, um, as I showed on, on the diagram, <clears throat> the Bitbake takes the, the upstream source code and produces packages from it. Uh, usually in RPM format, but you can also um, set it to be deb. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that is a Debian operating system. Uh, it just means it's using uh, deb as a packaging format. 
it is in no way a Debian operating system. So the answer is no, you can't merge those. Okay, then let's go to the <laughs> second question. In Debian slash Raspbian, you can use apt-get to install additional software mm -hmm. from their project servers. How would you do that with Yocto? Um, so there, there is an option uh, with the Yocto project to install a package manager, uh, which can either be uh, RPM-based or, or Debian-based. So it's, it's just a, another component of the software and once you've installed that, you can then do, for example, how to get um, from your Yocto project district. But then you need your own servers or how does it work? Uh, well, okay, yes, so that, that's the front end. So yes, you, you would of course need a back end. So you would uh, put the packages that you want to uh, update onto your own server. Uh, you would set your uh, sources.list to point to your own server. And it would then, um, when you do an apt upgrade or an apt uh, install, it would uh, download from your servers. And resolve all the uh, versions, compatibilities and so on? Uh, yes, it would do the, the, the normal uh, dependency checking um, and it would install dependencies in the normal way. However, I would like to say you probably don't want to do this. This is not the recommended way. Okay. Thank you. Then Tobias asks, uh, what if you install something like uh, Mender uh, slash FW update on Debian based systems? Is it possible to combine the best of those, the two worlds? Um, I'm not entirely sure I understand uh, the, the question. So, uh, so Mender.io uh, is one of several uh, update mechanisms commonly used on embedded systems. And the way it does the update essentially is using uh, a full image update. So you typically have two uh, partitions set aside for the root file system, the one you're using live and the one that's ready for updates. When you apply the update, you apply it to the second um, or the B image as we call it. And then you tell the bootloader to swap A and B over. So the next time you boot, you boot into the new um, image. Um, and that works uh, for Yocto project and for Debian-based systems and various other things as well. So uh, I don't fully understand the, the meaning of the question, um, but you can do, you can use Mender image-based update and other uh, image update mechanisms on both the Octo project and Debian based systems. Okay. Did that make sense? Hopefully to the <laughs> to the person who asked. If not, please uh, uh, please ask a, 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 a follow-up question. Okay. So yeah, once it shows up, uh, but uh, that was all the questions for now, at least. Uh, thank you again, and uh, I'll give over to Johan. Yeah, thank hey, you thank a you. lot. Uh, it was very nice having you here. And with that, I would like to thank our speakers, our sponsors, and all our viewers.